So in my new role that I started this year, I've been working through our application to find places where we can start introducing some more test coverage and adding some assurances into our application that it's going to do what we think it's going to do. And part of what we're doing is running a multi-tenanted application where we have an interface that allows us to migrate and seed tenant databases. So we can create the tenants and then run the migrations and seeders that we need to do. And these are not just standard seeds. These are specific seeds that we run in certain scenarios for certain tenants. And so just running this, we have a little bit of a confirmation and then a success. So the seeding goes off and happens in the background. So a quick win and an easy win for us was to make sure that these things just don't appear in production. We don't want to see them. We don't want to be able to accidentally run them. We want to guard our controllers to make sure that those can't be executed in production. And so probably the easiest thing to do is to just to do a simple environment check. So we can do something like unless um, app is production. Um, don't display this. It's end unless. So essentially what we're going to do here is only display this table heading for environments that are not production. And likewise, we're going to want to make sure that we don't display the corresponding table cell. Right. So we can see here that that still works. We're in our local environment. But if we were to change this to production, those things now disappear, which is what we would expect to happen. But how do we go about testing that behavior? How do we make sure that that's, that, that is what we're going to get? Um, I've set up a bunch of test cases here where we basically want to make sure that it does not show the destructive actions in production. It does show them when we're not in production. It allows, it doesn't allow seeding in production. It does allow seeding when not in production. It does not allow migrating in production. And it does allow migrating when not in production. So we have a whole um, bunch of test cases here to make sure these things are happening. Now, we're not actually doing any seeding or migrating or anything like that. We're just doing a production check here and then making sure that we're redirecting back. We just want to verify the behavior. So if we jump back to our test, given I'm in production. So the easiest way to do this, Laravel allows you to do this, this, this kind of stuff within the context of your tests is to just do something like this, app env production. Um, we're going to want to make sure that we've got tenant. So we will tenant equals tenant factory create, right? Uh, we're going to set our app environments to production. We're going to response equals this, get slash. And then we're going to want to say that uh, response assert don't see. Uh, let's do this. Give ourselves some useful feedback here. Uh, so I get this method right. Assert don't not see. Or is it? Assert don't see. Oh, I'm pretty sure it's that. Uh, we don't want to see migrate. Um, and we don't want to see the seed. So if we run this, um, what have we got here? What can we see? Right, so this hasn't actually worked because changing the environment in that manner doesn't do anything. And that's kind of awkward because we want to be able to do that switch so that we can figure out what's happening. Uh, and obviously this is not going to work. And there's a number of different things that you can try. None of them are really going to do what you want. So what we can do is something like app uh, it's detect environment, right? Production and run that test. And there you go. That has effectively done what we wanted it to do. We should probably assert here just for sanity's sake that we do see the tenant domain listed. So we're not getting a false positive that there's nothing being displayed on that page at all. So that effectively gives us what we want to do. 
Um, let's just tidy this up a little bit and then we don't have to worry about this. Right, still working. Um, and we're going to essentially have a very similar test this time without the environment detection. All right, get rid of that. Uh, visit the welcome page that we want to, we do want to see this. All right, there we go. Uh, this is all essentially going to be the same, right? So if we are in production, um, we don't, given we're in production, right? App, text, environment, production. Um, and then we want to have our tenant this time. Factory. When I seed the database. So when we, this post route uh, tenants dot migrate, seed, seed, tenant, uh, assert forbidden is essentially what's happening here. And uh, we should not be able to see the database. Right, so what's happened here? Received a 419. This is where we're gonna start running into issues. Because what's happened now is we're kind of fudging this. So we're fudging our tests into production such that the things that would normally work here Right, when we're in the testing environment, the CSRF token is not required. And so we're, we're gonna run into all kinds of different issues here. You'll find weird things with database and so on and so forth. So let's wind that back. So let's have a think about this. What, what do we want to do? How do we want to be able to easily test this? Fortunately, Laravel provides these things called facades and facades out of the box have a whole host of additional functionality for testing purposes. For example, you can mock and spy or you can even force those facades to return different things just by saying something like, uh, what are we calling it? All right, we'll call it simulate. Uh, we could do something like simulate should receive is in production and return true. So we want this kind of API to exist, right? We want to be able to say that we are in production for the purposes of the test, but we don't want to change the environment that the tests are running in, right? Uh, let's just go uh, into app, create a new file called simulate. All right, namespace app class simulate extends facade. Yeah. And then this needs to have a, is it a protected function? Who's the abstract? Where they get facade access though, isn't it? Ba, ba, ba. Facade root, no. Yeah, protected static function. Okay. Wish that was abstract. So instead of throwing an exception, it would give us useful feedback here. Whatever. Here. Um, and we'll just say return. Um, so we want to save that. We want to go into our app service provider. And we want to say um, this app bind simulate function. Uh, I suppose we just want to say a new simulate. How does Laravel name these things? It puts things into namespaces. So you've got a simulate facade and then you have a simulate class. So let's move this. Uh, let's create a directory, facades, and then we'll move this up to facades, right, and that, the facade accessor is simulate, and that should return a simulate class, and then the simulate class is, and it doesn't think it exists anymore, because this is actually no longer that. Anyway. Inside here, we're not going to extend, this is now going to be our imp implementation. Um, so this is just going to have a public function is in production. It's going to return a Boolean and we're just going to return in here app 
is production. So we see, um, and then we want that to do that. How familiar are we all? Sorry, we've got a facade that uh, sets its facade accessor, returns simulate where we do this binding here and then we return this thing. You could use real-time facades in this scenario, I think, and then create an alias so it does what, what we're expecting, but we will pretend that doesn't exist for now. So we can now go back to our tenant test case and in, instead of doing this business here, We'll now simulate that. So we'll go simulate and we want the facade. And so now that we're using the facade, we have this, right? We have access to should receive, which is just a static on the facade, on Laravel's facade itself. Um, so we're going to simulate, you know, that we're in production. Now this is still going to fail because it's now passing that bit, but we're not. Um, what have I done here? Must be of type closure or string. Okay because that's not how you app service provider. Um, I suppose we need to return that instead. So this is still gonna fail. Um, we've got the redirect because our seed controller, right? Cause it's skipping over this thing. Cause we're still doing an app is production check. So, what we're going to want to do is change this to our simulate facade in production. Uh, we can get rid of this now because I'm not using that. Run that again. Now, what has happened? 403. Now we're getting a 500 error. Interesting. Of course. You knew this, didn't you? Clever, clever people. Because that second parameter has to be an integer. Mm. Let's just say it's 400. Is it a 400 or is it forbidden? It's a bad request. Try this again. Right. Of course, it needs to be a 403. Um, it needs to be a 403 because that's what we said our test should do. Um, so 403, sounds fine. Seems reasonable. Let's update that while we're here. Wonderful. Um, now, because we've changed what we're doing, this test is gonna break now. This is actually now false, falsy um, because this is not simulate should receive um is in production and return true now this will fail because um that's not what we're using in our view right so if we go back to our welcome and uh, unless uh app sars simulate is in production and we probably want to use the same wrapper up here um and there we go so that test is now passing not using that so we can see that using facades for scenarios like this where we're wanting to manipulate things in our testing environment without manipulating the framework you know that detect environment thing seems like an easy out and our application at work is actually on Laravel 6. So they gave us a whole bunch of different issues. So we got a little bit further with Laravel 8 at the time of this recording than what was possible in the, in the newer or in the older versions. So, um, these, these tests, are uh, oops, fairly, fairly similar. Um, doesn't allow, does not allow seating. Um, so we'll do the same thing. Have I got, it does allow seeding. We're not in production. Um, let's be explicit here. Let's just say true. Um, assert redirect to welcome route welcome and see success. Oh, that's probably not valid. Assert C. Um, 
What did we happen? What happened here? What happened here? What happened here? Save the 403. Hmm. Ah. Oh. Let's say we should be explicit. Contains. Probably need to follow that redirect, I guess. Aha! Following redirects. Very good. Right. So, that one works now. Uh, we'll do the, the inverse here. Um, so it does not allow migrating in production. So now we're going to explicitly say we are in production. Um, we don't need to do that. We're going to say migrate tenant and we're going to see that we have a cert forbidden. Um, right. Received a, right, of course, because tenant, uh, migrate tenant, migrate tenant controller. Because this one is still using that. Simulate using a facade is in reduction. Boom. Not using app anymore. Uh, right. So that one is happy. And now we'll just do the inverse test to make sure we're happy. Um, this one will be false. Following redirects assert C success yep that's my fault and so that one passes and now all of our tests should happily pass so now we've got assurances here that it does not show destructive actions in production that it does when we're not in production and then we also check the endpoints themselves to make sure that when we are in production and not in production, we get exactly what we're after.